Hey everybody, welcome back to Frank's Homestead. And for this video, I am making a outdoor space for us. This is the area here and it's roughly 14 foot across there and then 15 foot this way. So 14 by 15. And that could change a little bit. So I'm gonna take you along for the journey here and show you how I'm gonna do it. If you haven't already, I hope that you'll hit that subscribe button to help support my channel and continue with more content down the road. And don't forget to hit that like button as well. And we appreciate you watching the video. So you see both these logs I've just peeled for my little project. Uh, the one in the back here is a little fresher cut. So it's a little lighter yet. This one here was cut last year. And of course it's darker. And you can see even while it sat during the winter, let me get a good look at that for you. But all this is from bug damage, eating the wood, which it, they didn't get into the center of the log, but um, I'm gonna leave it just like it is after I wash it up, because I think it's gonna give it some neat character when to the finished product. I've got the stakes roughly in the area they're gonna go. So that just kind of gives me an idea of what I'm looking at for size. And then I also have this clean out right here that goes to the septic system. I'm gonna leave it there, but I'll measure it off and mark it on paper for my records where it is exactly, just in case I need it. And I picked this area because we've got water that's close by, we've got power that's close by, and it's out of the way. So as you can see, I've already got my pile of gravel. I held that in uh, a while back. Some three quarter minus gravel that I'll be using for the posts to pack it in and also for the floor. And I had already started pulling different logs that I had laying around, cutting them into the lengths I'm gonna need to start with for the vertical posts and getting them peeled. Now it's just a matter of getting the holes dug and start setting the posts. And that's coming up right now. First I'm going to start with digging the two back posts. I'll start with the one here on the left rear and then I'll go to the one on the other side. Those will always be in a straight line. That's going to give me my starting point to squaring up this structure. I'll be putting each post two feet into the ground because uh, up here in this area the frost level gets down to two feet. You want to use gravel around the post for a few reasons. First of all, it packs around it really easy. It's easy to tamp. Yeah, it secures the post in really tight. Secondly, it allows any water to drain away from the wood, which would speed up the process of rot. And then lastly, it also keeps the dirt away from the post, from the wood, and that's where the bacteria lives that eats the wood. So now I'm gonna take a measurement off that first post from the inside over to where I have the stake here and make sure that I've got my distance where I want it before I dig the hole. So 
now that I got the two posts in, they are gonna be in a straight line from each other. And I found when it's working with logs, one of the easiest ways, especially if you're working by yourself, to start squaring up your structure using logs is just to put the screw in the center of the first post, put a screw in the center of the second post, run your string line tight, and then take your square and make sure that this edge here is in line with your string. Then, with this one being loose, you can now come back here, pick up your string line, tighten it, but you can see your square down there at the other end. I know you probably can't see it in the camera, but I can see it just fine. And all I have to do is just line it up along that edge. When I put this post in, it'll be square, at least on the three sides so far. Now, well, folks, you gotta remember, it's not a Picasso. When you're working with logs, they've got different thicknesses and everything else that goes with them. So you gotta have a little variance, but you get as close as you can get it. I'm gonna mark this with spray paint this time. Okay, so now this line will represent where the front of the log, if you think of this as the log, the front of the log will be there, so it'll be in this area, but it's also got to be centered up on this line, so half here and half here to make it match that log over there. So I'll mark these lines a little better, so I got plenty of markings to work with. Now I can dig it. So now that I got a dug, which this was a tough hole, it was full of rock. Um, I only end up with, oh, about 20 inches rather than the 24 that I wanted to go, just because it was solid rock down at the bottom. So I just have to adapt to that and make it work. The structure should have enough weight on it with no problem to withstand winds or anything else like that. But I don't know if you can see, you can probably see the white line that's still there, which is the center of our post. But I kind of took out the bank a little bit here, where this line was at. And then I'll put the post in there. And what I'll do is I'll get a measurement off of there, that corner post running over here, so I know roughly where to put that post. money so once again now that I've got that third post in I did the same thing as before with the string line using my big square now I'm getting ready to mark this first mark for the fourth and final pull so I've already got my measurement between the first two poles that I did so that way the measure will be the same here got my can of spray paint I got my tape measure run out now, I'm going to line it up with the square. Don't want to paint my tape measure. Put a little on there. I think I'm about to get rained on. This just moved in. While I was working. Ain't got much time left, but there's got a bunch of rain in it, so I'm gonna pack up my stuff for a bit. Yep, it started to rain. Guess it was a good idea to pack up for the day. Guess I'll start tomorrow. Okay, so the next day, uh, we got a pretty good rain yesterday. So it's day two, and so my marks are a little washed out, and I'm gonna have to remark it before I can put it in that fourth vertical support so that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna start with a little bit of a chance of rain today too so we'll see how it goes all 
Okay, so I got some preliminary marks. I'm gonna pull some measurements. Make sure we're right where we're supposed to be. Bingo, that's right on, okay. you can see got it all laid out and where the circle is where the next and last vertical pole is gonna go but just had to double check it and make sure it was in the right spot some gravel around it. It's kind of nice that this is right next to the pile. <laughs> yeah. Now that I have all the vertical supports up, now I need to cut the tops off. I made sure when I did these vertical supports that I left plenty of room to work with because of different elevations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the highest elevation and start my mark from there. It'll be seven feet. Then I'll be using my string line and string line level to go from this pole to each of the other poles to get them all to the same elevation. I got the vertical posts all cut off on the top. Now I'm going to take some of the two by fours that I've milled and I'm going to skirt the bottom of my area here. That will be to hold back the gravel for the floor. As you can see down at that end, it's uh, quite a difference in elevation. But I'll be taking some rock from around here and filling it in. And then I'll top it with a three quarter inch to make a nice floor. So on each section of board that I put down, just take another piece of two by four and I cut a little point on it and then I'm going to drive it in to help support that board and keep it from pushing out. this end down here I'm just gonna kind of rough eyeball it but put in a temporary screw just to kind of get it up to rough height. Give me something to rest my board on. So for this third side I put a screw down here into this log at the elevation it needs to be and then I'll check it for level at the other end. I may have to cut it or dig it down just a little. Okay, now that I've got up the three sides, what I'll do is I'll use my Coyote tractor to bring in fill 
and I'll have bigger rock to start with as a good base. And then I'll put the gravel on top of that before finishing off. What I'm going to do is in this area here, I'm going to dig out part of the bank because we're slowly expanding it further back in. So I might as well take some of that and put it over in our fill area here. Okay, so I've got my rock in here. Now I just need to finish it up. I put in my last two by four. And so now I'll put that rock up against it and then I'll take this little pile of gravel right here and I'll put it against the outside of this two by four. That'll give me the outside support instead of putting in a stake because this is all real rock here. Plus I'm gonna need to be able to drive up onto it when I set my poles. If anybody's wondering how I leveled it, the answer is I didn't. And here's why. I'm gonna be driving the tractor on there to put and set logs. I'll be walking on it and different things like that. It's going to be compacting that gravel down. And then when it's all complete, that's when I will do the final grading of it to get it level. Now, hopefully you've enjoyed part one of how to build an outdoor space and you'll come back to see parts two and three and then finish product. But until then, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time.